Hi everybody, here again with Butter and today we're going to go through and look at the muscles of the thoracic limb that span from limb bone to limb bone and we're going to group them according to innervation. First off we're going to find our bones, so we're going to find the scapula that runs from here to here. The humerus is going to run from this point to this point in the elbow, the ulna and the radius, the carpal bones, metacarpals and digits. The subscapularis would be in here medial to the scapula on the underside, the medial side, and it would span the shoulder joint and attach to the lesser tubercle, and that function of that muscle would be predominantly medial <laughs> and lateral stability. Subscapularis would be innervated by the subscapular nerve. Spanning from the supraspinous fossa of the scapula to the greater tubercle of the humerus would be the supraspinatus. The infraspinatus would span from the infraspinous fossa down to the greater tubercle. So the supraspinatus would have some effect of extending the shoulder joint in the weightless limb. The supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles are innervated by the suprascapular nerve. Two muscles innervated by the axillary nerve would be the deltoideus and the teres major. The teres major would span from this caudal border of the scapula down to the medial proximal aspect of the humerus. The deltoideus spans from the scapular spine down across the shoulder joint to the lateral aspect of the humerus on the deltoid tuberosity. The function of these muscles would be in the weightless limb to flex the shoulder joint. The biceps brachii would originate from the distal aspect of the scapula, the supraglenoid tubercle. They would come down in the medial aspect of the arm and insert on the proximal medial aspect of the radius and ulna. The brachialis would come down and insert also in the same place as the biceps brachii and the proximal medial aspect of the radius and ulna. Those muscles would flex the elbow joint and they would be innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. In the arm, we're gonna consider the triceps. The triceps originate from the distal caudal border of the scapula and the proximal aspects of the humerus and they all take up the caudal aspect of the arm and they all insert on the olecranon tuber. Contraction of these muscles would act to extend the elbow joint. The triceps would be innervated by the radial nerve. And continuing with the muscles innervated by the radial nerve, the extensors of the antebrachium would originate from the lateral epicondylar area and they would come across the dorsal aspect of the carpal, metacarpal phalangeal, and interphalangeal joints and these muscles would be innervated by the radial nerve and upon contraction, they would open the angle of these joints or extend them. The antebrachial flexors would originate from the medial epicondylar area and come across the, pal the palmar aspect of these joints in the carpus, metacarpal phalangeal, and interphalangeal. They are innervated by the median and ulnar nerve and contraction of these muscles would flex those joints. Good boy, butter. Good boy. You're done.